I'm climbing Mount Everest because I can. Wow, really? Mount Everest? I'm gonna take you with me when I climb Mount Everest. You can climb Mount Everest with Batman? Did you ever climb Mount Everest? No. Many years ago, the great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it? Climbing Mount Everest has always been considered the pinnacle of human achievement. As popular as the idea might be, few people realize that the world's tallest mountain holds a dark and horrifying secret. There is an accidental graveyard called the Rainbow Valley on Mount Everest. It gets its name from the multicolored jackets and climbing gear attached to the numerous corpses littered around the mountainside. People seeking to climb Mount Everest must pass these colorful corpses on their way to the top. Over time, the mummified bodies have become goalposts for would-be climbers. In 1841, an obscure peak in the Himalayas was recognized as the tallest mountain in the world by a British survey team led by Sir George Everest, who Mount Everest was eventually named after in 1865. The first people to officially climb Mount Everest began their attempts in 1921. Two British expedition team attempts in 1921 and 1922 failed to reach the summit of Mount Everest though. In 1924, two members of a British expedition team, George Mallory and Andrew Irvine, were seen just 800 feet from the summit before being engulfed by bad weather. Though Mallory's body was eventually found in 1999, it could not be established whether he or Irvine reached the summit, as nothing was found on him to prove it. The mystery remains unsolved to this day. The first climbers to officially stand on top of Mount Everest were Edmund Hillary from New Zealand and a Sherpa, Tenzing Norgay from Nepal, on May 29, 1953. In the 69 years since that first successful summit, over 6,000 people have reached Mount Everest Peak. Sadly, more than 300 people are thought to have died on Everest, with around 200 bodies remaining on the mountain due to the difficulty in recovering them. These bodies make up the Rainbow Valley. The German Woman in 1979, German mountaineer Hannelore Schmatz became the fourth woman in history to reach Mount Everest summit. At the same time, her 50-year-old husband, Gerhard, became the oldest person to reach its peak. Both would have been remarkable accomplishments were it not for the tragedy that befell the Schmatzes just afterward, ending with their deaths. During their second ascent, the couple split up, never realizing that their split would be forever. Gerhard's group made it back to South Camp first and began the journey to Everest Peak. Even though Gerhard and his group reached the summit on October 1st, they were forced back down rapidly due to worsening weather conditions. Meanwhile, the descending group warned Hannelore Schmatz and her team that it was too dangerous to continue. Gerhard's notes described his wife as indignant, and she forged ahead at 5 a.m. the following day. When Gerhard arrived back at base camp at 6 p.m., he was alerted via radio that his wife had made it to the top. Unfortunately, Hannelore and American climber Ray Gennett were both overcome with exhaustion during their descent. Despite being warned against taking refuge by their accompanying Sherpas, they built a camp and took shelter. But this shelter was built in the death zone. Needless to say, the area lives up to its name. Gennett died of hypothermia, leading Hamelor and two Sherpas to frantically attempt their descent. Tragically, her body had already begun to shut down. Her last words were simply, Water. Water. Sitting down with no more energy left to spare, she slumped against her backpack and died. Hannelore Schmatz was the first woman to die on Everest's treacherous slopes. She joined others who have perished on Mount Everest and become frozen guideposts for future climbers, most of whom stated that the seated position of Schmatz's final rest appeared to be watching them with conjecture as they made their own attempts to reach the summit. 
Some have even said that Schmatz's eyes seemed to follow them as they made their pass. Sleeping Beauty of Everest Francis Arsentiev, known among climbers as the Sleeping Beauty of Everest, was the first American woman to reach the top of Everest without the help of supplemental oxygen. It was during the descent that she succumbed to the cruel atmospheric conditions of the mountain. Frances Arsentiev was not a professional climber. However, she was married to a skilled and experienced climber, Sergei Arsentiev. Together, the couple sought to make history by reaching the summit of Mount Everest without the use of supplemental oxygen. On May 22, 1998, Francis Arsentiev made it to the top of the summit without using any supplemental oxygen, becoming the first American woman to do so. Sadly, that decision would tragically lead her to her death. Although the couple made it to the summit, bad weather and poor visibility on their descent forced them to spend an extra three days above 26,000 feet. They eventually became separated during the journey. Sergei would successfully make his way back to base camp, but sadly, Francis succumbed to hypothermia and never returned. Ian Woodfall and Kathy O'Dowd, climbers from a separate Mount Everest expedition team, came upon Arsentiev's body the next day. Woodall and O'Dowd would later comment that due to her natural good looks, the peaceful position of her body and the white, waxy appearance of her skin caused by frostbite, reminded them of the fairy tale character Sleeping Beauty. In a tragic extension of events, Sergei Arsentiev would perish on Mount Everest the very next day in a failed attempt to locate his wife's remains. Sergei's body would not be found until the next year. It was determined that he perished from injuries he received during a fall. The Arsentievs left behind an 11-year-old son. Green Boots Possibly the most famous body on Everest is that of Green Boots, real name Sewang Paljor, an Indian climber and constable with the Indo-Tibetan Border Police. Paljor met his end on May 10, 1996. He was part of a three-man group attempting to be the first Indian team to ascend Mount Everest from the northeastern route. Sadly for the Indian team, their timing could not have been worse. The weather during the 1996 season was extremely volatile. That year would ultimately become one of the deadliest on record for Mount Everest climbers. When a storm rolled in, visibility dropped to zero and the temperatures plummeted. Separated from the climbers in his group and suffering from the cold, Paljor found a small cave and huddled inside for protection from the elements. It would become his final resting place. Paljor died laying in his left side facing into a small cave. Because he lies so close to the trail, he is extremely visible to other climbers. Sadly, during certain levels of snowfall, his legs extend into the path and other climbers must step over him to pass by. He gained his nickname from the highly visible and bright neon green boots he is wearing. According to climbing records, 80% of the people who take the summit approach from the north side take time to rest in the small cave where green boots lays. Because the little enclave provides shelter from the wind, it remains a popular spot for people to sit and catch their breath before their final push to the summit. In a sad twist of fate, 20 years and 5 days after the death of Paul Jor, a 34-year-old British man named David Sharp passed away in the same cave. Climbing alone, Sharp succumbed to hypothermia as up to 40 other climbers passed him by. Reports say many of the other climbers failed to offer him assistance, either believing him to be green boots or assuming he had passed already. Why are there so many bodies left on the mountain? Getting bodies out of the death zone of Mount Everest can often be an impossible chore. Family and friends of the deceased must make arrangements with Sherpa extraction teams to have the remains brought off the mountain. However, in addition to the incredible danger for the Sherpas, financing the extraction team can cost up to $70,000. To avoid leaving their loved ones to make this decision, some climbers opt to sign a grim body disposal form, ordering that their corpse should remain in place on the mountain. 
and forever claim their spot in the Rainbow Valley.